Good afternoon all. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your metals market update for this Thursday, the 2nd of May, 2019. We're just after 3.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Well, another down day in the metal markets. They've been getting pounded. The dollar, another up day. Not dramatically so, but an up day. And today what really happened, I think, is I think that the silver market got out of whack yesterday with the gold. I mean, gold only down a dollar and a half and silver was down 27 cents. So to a degree, they came back. I'm still bothered that copper's not doing well. And I haven't heard anything yet on the U.S.-Chinese trade deal other than next week, everybody's hoping that they could put the final wraps on things for the president to sign. At the same time, Mexico is making noise that, you know, it's done everything to comply with the U.S. wishes for the new trade deal between the U.S., Mexico. I'm not going to mention Canada in that because that could be a deal just between that. And now they're saying they want the steel tariffs removed right now and they want tomatoes. It's a huge business for them to not have tariffs on them as they export the tomatoes here. And they're meeting, I guess, next week with Mr. Lighthizer and they're putting the pressure on. They're ready to sign the labor bill that had been demanded by uh, House Speaker Pelosi. That has passed their Senate. The president's ready to sign it, their president. Now the question is, are, do we live up to our deal? What's going on there? It could be, maybe we get a, uh, the grand deal of all where everything gets signed in very short order. China, Mexico, maybe Canada. When we take a look at gold, it's been coming down. As you can see for the week, you're down about $13. The low this week took out this break low of 1271.90, so it's been a fresh flush to the downside. You get to see that to a pretty good degree when you go to the daily bar chart, how the market failed up at this area, and the swing line with yesterday's reversal followed through to the downside. So that's important. Now, the question is where are the key moving averages? I can tell you the 18 day right here, it's where the market stopped on that rally and ran out of steam. And then the hardest thing was, does one sell short as you break through that swing line? Got about a thousand dollar risk. And I'm not saying you did or didn't do it, but it's certainly a market that's got downside bias back in a trend. Where could support be? Well, the lower Bollinger Band's a possibility. That number is going to drop probably again tonight. It'll probably be closer to 1260 as it's been dropping about $2 a day. See what I'm getting at? You, you can take a look and you, you give a guess as to where it's going to come in. So that would take the market down to get to it another $9. I don't know. Resistance back up here. And what about momentum? You're oversold. So you have a market that's oversold. Do you make it the rest of the way down or do the pros take some money off for the weekend? That's the question that you're sort of left with. I can tell you where the resistance is and where the market, if it took out 1289.40, it would be considered right now, at least for Friday, a market that that was it and uh, you're back to a neutral. In GLD, it's the same thing. We'll start off with the momentum's oversold. I think you'd agree the 18 day average, four or five days in a row, stop that market and boom, you let go to the downside. A potential target, doesn't have to hit it, is 119.10 with resistance back at 121.17. Take out 121.55, you break the downtrend pattern. You'd have a lower low and a higher high. So the bears will likely try to defend the market if you get a good rally back up to that number. When you're oversold, they're not as aggressive as they are when you're not oversold. In GDX, just keep falling. And by the way, Remember we talked about this, the bearish crossover. When you get a bearish crossover, it means the shorter term average, in this case, the 18 day is getting under the 100. Often, I, I can't use the word always because it's not accurate. Often it results in prices making another stab and they did that today. So that part's there. Here's what's more bearish about this chart than the others. You've got this embedded reading. Until you lose that, this market just keeps saying lower. That's how I'm reading it. I can see that resistance, I wouldn't want if I'm a bear to get over this uh, 2110. However, it's not the leading indicator any longer. The embedded reading it is and until it's lost, you're still looking for that potential of the Bollinger Band. The gold-silver ratio, as I said yesterday, it looked to me like it got a little out of whack. But a little is that's all it did. I mean, it didn't give up very much today. It, it just gave up 
pennies if you think about it. And on the silver chart, if you look at where the market's at right now, it's still fighting and it's staying under the lower Bollinger Band. There's nothing friendly on this chart. You've got lower highs, lower lows. You be began right here. This number was 15, 13 and a half, then 15, 12, a double top at 15, 12. Notice the 18 day average, how the market fought there and then it caved in and went to the Bollinger Band. Now the question is with it being oversold, do you head towards an embedded reading or do you just start, and start riding the lower Bollinger Band or do you get a bounce out of here? The copper market, not even bouncing. And you would think if there's good news with China, you'd get a bounce on it. You're not. Lower highs, lower lows. I think the ISM data that's come out, and while everybody reads and they think everything's good, manufacturing must be slowing down. Copper, we call it Dr. Copper. It's often an indicator as to how the world economies are doing because it's used so much, and especially by China. They use about half the world's copper. In the platinum, look at how this just fell apart, pretty hard. What's amazing to me is in Chicago, we have the police out again because people are stealing these catalytic converters. Maybe they should stop to it and wait for prices to come back up. In any case, higher high, lower low, staying under the Bollinger Band. You've put into play the possibility of the 100-day average. I would think the market tries to get over the Bollinger Band, but there's nothing bullish about that chart. Last, the Palladium market. Look, at you held yesterday the challenge of the Bollinger Band, and I will stick with what I say. The first challenge of a band, be it on the upside or downside, that's where I think pros take money off the table. Could they leave something on the table? They could. But they're playing the percentage plays that 95% of the time you'll stay within the band. And that doesn't mean that the band, especially if it's going sideways, is going to break out to the downside or upside. So what we had here is that. I think the pros, again, they were looking. Let me take you to yesterday. This is where you were at a Tuesday. Here's Wednesday. If you rally, I'm going to look at the 100-day average in the 18 as potentially being resistance. You got to the 100-day. You're not oversold, but you're also got a lower and low, higher high. So I, I think the bears are in here, but would you want to put a stop over the most recent high? That becomes the danger part of it. In the dollar index, you were all the way up here. If you fall back, those of you that are regulars watching, you know, I look for the potential, doesn't mean it has to do it, of the 18-day average becoming a key number. The market was overbought, starts correcting, you're starting to move down, you get down yesterday, this is yesterday's action, you're still correcting the market, now you've corrected past tense, you no longer have e either number on uh, over 70, so the market's not overbought, and it's respected on that first challenge, the 18-day average of closes. What would turn the market bearish, in my opinion, is taking out yesterday's low. I don't see anything here that's bullish in the sense of higher lows, higher highs that can happen. If you take out this number, though, you'd have lower highs and then the lower low, which could put this range into play. That's, you know, how you look at it. I discuss this and a heck of a lot more every day in my market research. Now, there's different levels of my research. Some people only want my written commentary. Other people just want to look at this morning subscriber video because I throw out buy here, sell there. It's very, very aggressive for people. It's not what I do here in the videos you're seeing. I'm able to get a lot more aggressive because there's a user ID and password and it's not available to John Q Public. Got to be one of my subscribers or somebody I've given access to. This is what it looks like when I write my twice daily reports. I write twice daily, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one in the morning Friday and I start again on Sunday night. And I try to bring you up in those reports as to the next day's uh, reports that are coming out, what the market's looking for, what the consensus is, blah, 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 so you get an idea about it. In other words, it's a letter written for commodity traders. If you haven't tried it, I'd like you to. You can call my staff. It's a free trial. We're not going to take a credit card or anything like that. You can go to our website, sign up for it. We'll get it into your hands. And if you're watching me on YouTube, click here. It'll take you to our website. You'll see that carousel of free offers. Sign up for this and whatever else you'd like. We'll put it in your hands. I'm my rep, Steen. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.